question, which is a panel discussion on role of content in driving business direct to consumer. Let me please invite our panelists. First up, Sagar Boke, Head Customer and Shopper Marketing Food and Beverages, Tata Consumer Products. We've got Amin Lakhani, the Chief Operating Officer, Mindshare South Asia. Jain uh, Mehta, the Senior General Manager, Planning and Marketing, GCMMF uh, Amun, who's joining us. We've got Isha Nagar, the Managing Director, Nepal, India. We've got GB Sridhar, the Regional Director, India, Middle East, and South Asia, Singapore Tourism Board. And the session chair of this panel discussion is going to be Gurpreet Singh, co-founder and COO, One Digital Entertainment. Well, with this, I'd like to humbly invite and welcome all our panelists and our session chair for joining us. What an incredible start we have had to our content jam today. And your smile says it all. Thank you for bringing in the energy and exuberance. And welcome once again. Gurpreet, the stage and screen is all yours to take it forth. Uh, thank you, Bhavna. Thank you so much. Uh, I think the stage is for all the senior leaders uh, who are present with me on the panel. Uh, I just feel like a kid right now um, being the session chair, but I'm just, I'll just try to play my small role of uh, navigating the discussion amongst uh, some of these uh, marketing tycoons who are sitting out there. I mean, some of the brands, I mean, people like uh, um, Jen um, uh, uh, from Tata, right? These are the brands that we, uh, they have been doing marketing even before I was born, possibly, right? So I'm just saying I'm here uh, to take learnings uh, along with the audience from uh, everyone out there. I would just like, though most of them none, uh, need no introductions, um, but I would just like to set it up for the context for the entire audience. Uh, if each one of us can just give quick introductions about um, um, the overall uh, marketing landscape that we are doing in each one of our brands and what is our specific uh, role. Uh, um, Jen, do you uh, said do you want to go ahead with uh, your experience of I think over three decades uh, in, in, in working with Amul? Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it, uh, pleasure meeting all of you, and thank you, Bhavna and uh, Michelle, for inviting me for this uh, uh, nice, interesting conversation. Uh, see, I've been with Amul for the last thirty years. Uh, it's my first job, so I'm still learning, and uh, we've been a part of this uh, business for now seventy five years. And uh, Amul was among the first, uh, so to say, official advertisers in India way back in 1950s and ever since then. Uh, one of the things which has stuck into our DNA is not to think like an advertiser, but to think like a content creator. And I go back to the year 1965 when uh, the first Amul topical came up. So over the last 55, 56 years, you're seeing a lot of content being created without being talking specifically about the products or the brands that Amul had. And uh, you know the journey of Amul, uh, the success, the turnover that we have is more than 50,000 crores. But the focus still remains on creating the content as much as so that you are able to uh, retain the customers, attract their attention continuously. And you're seeing seven, eight generations, I mean, so many generations also uh, passing by and uh, changing tastes and consumer habits. So this, this is what is in the DNA of the brand and the creative agencies that work with us or the channel or the partners that we have continuously focus on uh, this. The social media changed the dynamics a bit and the Amul Topical obviously adapted to the social media, be Twitter or Facebook or Insta, whatever. But uh, the last year of pandemic gave us a very, very interesting chance of uh, using this uh, technology and uh, an opportunity to create content using recipes. Now, this is not a new thing for us because Amul has been the charter sponsor of MasterChef uh, for the last 10 years. And uh, you know how it goes into making a TV show in which you give specific instances, brand name bolna, product dikhana, yeah. karna, the investments are huge, these 25, 30 crore per season. And uh, you, you get a show and you get measure the ratings. But here we used Facebook to connect the people, consumers who were at home because of lockdown in the first phase of pandemic, and I'm talking about April 2020, and the chefs who were sitting at home. We gave them, the chefs, the access to our Facebook page and told them to pre prepare recipes which can be people at home and can prepare easily. We did not say specifically use Amul products. We did not say use Amul name in any way. Uh, only small request was not to use competitor products in your face kind of uh, thing, but uh, we created magic. Now, for this show has been running for last more than 530 days, nonstop since 17th of April, 2020. More than 3,300 chefs have participated. You created 3,000 shows and more importantly, created content of about 1,35,000 minutes. Now, this is translated into number of days is equal to 100 days out of 500 days. So if you watch, start watching it, this is the content you get. And 
the audience was not local it was international we reached out to more than 50 countries and we continue to get viewership and all this done at an investment of zero rupees so if the brand has that capability and the current uh, social media has that power to reach out you are able to do uh, impossible things in difficult times also and now we are trying to use and leverage it as much as possible in many other ways so this is just thought the introductory remarks and we'll continue to discuss after sure that. sure uh, sure uh, uh, mr jain sorry i mean uh, i mean just to take i mean while it was my follow up question later on but i can possibly ask you right now itself uh, because uh, for brands uh, that you are heading uh, amul and i'll have this lead up question to mr sagar also for tata right a lot of your products are um, sold not just in in the metros but in very remote locations right where reaching out to those consumers might have been difficult right everyone knows about uh, amul brands tata brands in on all those remote locations do you think how, how do you prioritize those markets do you think um, they those markets also understand the integrated content right not just on the face marketing but integrated brand integrations within the content pieces what have you been learning and any and anyone who want to target those locations can take learning from you it's a good question because we connect with the rural audience in two ways they are our milk producers also and they are also our consumers so the brand has to reach out in both the dimensions it's not just the idea of just selling a product to them it is also saying that how much trust uh, they need to have on us as uh, uh, they are the owners of the cooperative so uh, that's an additional responsibility but i'll focus right on the selling part uh, distribution is a game which uh, most of the panelists here and a lot of people in the audience have been playing so that is conventional you try to reach out to them by appointing distributors in every single taluka every single 5000 10000 population town and so on that's the easy part then comes the difficult part of communication which means you look at mass media or the conventional tv print digit whatever digital actually came in as a boon now uh, and we realized that all this while we've been talking about largely in english and hindi and with the new technology it's not possible to do so in that seamless manner so over the last one and a half years we have created amul brand pages in 11 different languages so we creating content in marathi as much as in tamil telugu malayalam kerala odia uh, malayalam odia uh, bengali even arabic and uh, trying to share our messages our stories and believe me the recipes also are being uh, done in those languages with the chefs of cuisine of that particular region so that is uh, and now the audience is also digitally savvy uh, you are able to reach out to them talk to them in their languages listen to them also in their languages and uh, that that's makes a very interesting part so and now further we are expanding to three four more other languages we are talking we are look, uh, looking at state languages but not state languages like a sindhi or a bhojpuri and so on and uh, trying to reach out to the audiences in a much more uh, simpler way so that it's easy for them to understand the brand uh, then uh, focus on availability of products using technology uh, we have a locate amul app in which anywhere you are sitting in india within 5 kilometers you can look get the names of amul uh, retailers Uh, amul distributors and the shops uh, having list of the amul products which are currently available and i would invite you to try that out also right now so this is how technology is being used both ways in expanding distribution and also communicating to the audience in the uh, right sense oh super i think uh, localization of content marketing is is the key right i mean which everyone right now is been focusing on mr sagar uh, from your point of view uh, tata also runs a wide range of uh, products right you, you are not focused about a particular just just one of those products and and as the head of uh, consumer products marketing you just want to share your experience how do you prioritize and and how do you see the entire uh, content marketing ecosystem Uh, i'll first talk about the content marketing or to the rural audience and um, uh, adding to the learning that uh, mr jain shared uh, i would say uh, two two more uh, you know learning so really i i think first is a, there has to be genuine it has to be customer first most of the stuff that we create is advertiser first or the brand first uh, now two examples i'll give one uh, during the lockdown uh, we realized that people were sitting at home obviously in the you know in the month of april and may there was ipl to happen ipl really obviously got got shelled uh, you know uh, shelled off uh, so we had created with jio i mean as you know obviously jio has a very wide reach uh, uh, you know across uh, rural platform we created something called iq india quizzing league and we really obviously the the natural connect with tata salt as a well. tata salt is iodized salt right and iodine is supposed to help the mental development right and we created content across languages uh, uh, you know across around 15 languages 15 different different indian languages and we created different clubs of different cities 
and quizzing i think you know general knowledge and you know creating content on that hub crores of views got created i think using the the insight that people are sitting at home they are missing out something a brand with a connect uh, uh, on, on of, of a proposition really really wanting to engage them effectively and at a fraction of cost i think it would have cost us somewhere on 15 20 lakhs uh, in the entire investment of both media and the content creation but i would say the the, the return that you would have got in multiple of crores so uh, so the first thing is that really finding that insight what is very relevant second thing i think uh, the what co uh, content can essentially do is really able to create an emotional connect so i will give an example the rural audiences i think uh, uh, <clears throat> fairs and all these things are there are a big draw so 3 uh, 4 years back in puri if you know uh, there is a rath yatra so you know 2 kilometers stray there are around a million people which are stranded so what we had essentially created we had created a popsicle which is basically which was a uh, which was basically powered by tata salt because dehydration is a major issue right and it was launched on big time and we created that content put that digitally and put on various platform that almost went viral so the idea is that if you are creating a connect finding a good uh, simplest the consumer first product product connect i think content can really do uh, really do magic for you other area where i be, i believe content can really play an important role uh, is in commerce uh, obviously uh, when i say commerce uh, i don't think it is as effective as a direct uh, funnel performance marketing but we have to have a role uh, so we 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 started something called a sata nutri corner where we had dual objective of creating sticky audience who believes in our thinking so tata sampan as a brand which we created we when the philosophy of the brand was to say that indian homemade food as the power to really uh, uh, you know provide health and nutrition uh, like any anything else that people really really wanted to say and a good quality so so essentially making every single indian house house household uh, nourish the household through native indian food and lot of wisdom around it like say why spices are good why the uh, the uh, you know the protein from legumes or pulses is lean right uh, and, and 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 many such practices right we created content around it and we saw that uh, in couple of months around 4 to 5 lakh organic views people visiting thrice three to four times and obviously the brand was seamlessly viewed because our products were essentially uh, essentially uh, uh, based on that philosophy while while we did not get huge weight in terms of number of customer but there are many people who would buy their entire range from us so 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 i believe uh, content depending upon what the objective has really power to transform the the way brand are perceived and objectives across brand love uh, 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 brand memorability as well as sales uh, uh, you know i i think the comp content uh, really if will use well can can really serve all these objectives so thank you thank you so much uh, sagar um, i mean uh, uh, at mindshare you represent um, some of the biggest brands uh, out here and and beyond media buying mindshare also has a very very strong robust content um, cap building capabilities within uh, in house only not just from a creative point of view but from a end to end execution production point of view right what have you your learnings been in last few years right and and today like i said you are not just an agency who is just buying media for brands but also overall developing fully content um, their brands integrated into content solutions okay thank you thank you so much for that kind introduction uh <clears throat> so so first and foremost uh, i think let me let me just put this very very straight that uh, the win in in our entire journey uh, is about understanding consumers right uh, i i think that is at the heart of everything that that we do so if if you're seeing the consumer and watching him migrate from one platform to the other it is very important to see uh, where the aggregation of of consumer are going right so that's that that's at the heart at the center as, as a pillar of the second part is when you look at digital and data i mean they have actually democratized uh, you know uh, e-commerce or rather commerce in many ways so when you put both of these things together you know wherever there are consumers and there is technology available or there is data access available you can actually enable commerce and start you know i mean uh, doing things like for example it just needs to be a instagram post or you can do a radio call or you can do a voice call and you know you can have a click of a button and you know you can you can start doing you know transaction in place so the criticality the critical thing is that uh, what content should we serve to a consumer 
and at what stage of the journey is right very important to understand the consumer journey uh, you know and 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 therefore intrigue him you know allow him to engage with that consumer you know engage with the consumer will depend on at what period of time are you throwing that content to him for example you know uh, somebody who is not feeling well you know who has a headache and somebody not feeling well in his mind he is searching for an answer to that and suddenly you know a simple ad of an headache pops up he will have 100% attention but somebody is in a party mood uh, you know you you throw in 25 ads of you know headache i mean it will go down as a you know, as 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 a as a blind spot so i think you know to, and, and if you apply this principle you know it, it it becomes very very clear as to you know what kind of content will you create for a consumer at at what point in time so i think that is our day job the day job is that how can we really really you know uh, find where the consumer is in his journey and therefore how do we intervene that journey and place our content in a manner that is very very greatly receivable right? if he's already on a on a on a marketplace platform searching for a product you know do we do, should we waste time on storytelling or should we waste time or invest time in telling him that you know boss you have five products and this is the best product available to you so i think i think that that's that's the piece over there but if he's not any you know, he's enjoying ipl or he's enjoying a movie and all of that that's a great time to go and build the upper funnel narrative for him right and mind you uh, the biggest proud moment is uh, you know clients our our own clients uh, who will talk about their work one client has already spoken about the body of work that we do uh another client will 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 talk about the body of work that you know that is done and what is intriguing me and you know really really exciting me is that cpg clients are most evolved you know we know that they are most evolved because you know they understand marketing they they have a 365 day approach you know weeks on air is a conversation always on is a conversation and that's an established norm but how can a how can a cement client create content and you know engage with consumer there's something that we will learn i mean that that's really exciting to me that how can you go in a very very non uh, you know involved category how can you create consumer engagement and involvement is something that is clearly engaging you know i mean uh, you know impressing me now so so more on this uh, you know i mean i can keep talking yeah i think uh, Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll I love to touch base on, uh, like you mentioned, because I I always feel there are brands with whom uh, the content flow, the storytelling goes very very organically. And like you said, there are brands, there are brand categories where it's a little uh, tough ask uh, to how do you integrate that category within uh, the entire storytelling experience. And and that's where uh, I think agencies like you uh, come come into play, Mr. Uh, Mr. Shridhar uh, at. singapore tourism right what singapore has been able to do i mean i'm just saying i look at singapore not just as a country but also as a fascinating brand right what they have built um, in last 50 years to right now the hub of uh, tourism not for uh, the leisure tourism but from an entire business ecosystem uh, point of view also do you want to just share some insights um, Uh, and how do you operate? Do you, I mean, how do you see content marketing as a key priority area in in from from your marketing point of view? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, so for Singapore tourism, we have been in in India for more than two and a half decades now, and the biggest uh, challenge for us has always been how do we communicate to our varied audiences? And you're right, Singapore is a, a familiar favorite for many Indians, whether it's leisure travel, cruise, uh, meetings and incentives. Uh, family travel so uh, uh, and regional regional cities as well uh, so in the last two and a half decades we have come from a position whereby singapore was introduced to the to the indian audiences uh, just to give you a, a quick some numbers in 2019 we had invited 1.41 million visitors from india to singapore making india the third largest source market for singapore after china and indonesia Uh, India is our number one cruise source market in 2019. I'm talking about pre-COVID. Uh, Singapore Singapore also counts the Indian meetings and incentive segment as a very important segment for us. Uh, so over the last decade, for example, India has moved up uh, from from about the fifth or the sixth largest source market to being the third largest. So our biggest challenge in India has always been how do we communicate to the Indian audiences and engage them. I mean, my my job line job description is very simple, right? I invite Indian audiences to Singapore, 
but how we do it uh, is, is a bit complicated. A, we are a destination. So we do not own products. Uh, although we are Singapore Tourism Board, I don't own any of the experiences I promote in the country. So I work with the likes of the zoo, the bird park, the gardens by the bay, Marina Bay Sands and Resorts World Sentosa. But all of these experiences, we need to sort of accumulate them and present to the Indian audiences in a, in a meaningful manner. So three C's and, and one A. I mean, I was just thinking, what, what, how do we uh, present content marketing? So first C is about uh, making sure our content is creative. We are operating in an environment whereby the Indian audiences or any audiences are, are having a lot of content coming at them and, and trying to say things above the noise and clutter is going to be very, very difficult. So we have always looked for projects which are able to present our content in a creative manner. Second C is clarity. We want to have clarity in our communications, what Singapore stands for, what are the experiences you can enjoy in Singapore when you come, what are some of the things that you need to look out for, especially in this COVID-19 situation, although travel borders are not opened yet, what are some of the things that are happening in Singapore? And we need to be able to present that clearly to our audiences because clarity is something that uh, increasingly audiences are looking out for because they are, they are bombarded with so much information and content and knowledge. Uh, they are looking for some clear, clear communication messages from brands like the Singapore Tourism Board. Uh, the third C, and I think uh, the others have also touched on it, is consumer centricity. Gone are the days where the messages were push. We sell Singapore. We say we are a great country. Come and visit us. The audiences are no longer looking yeah. at that. They are very discerning. They are saying, I'm having a conversation with my friend about a particular passion. Where's the relevance Singapore has for that? So coincidentally, our, our brand is passion made possible. So I need to be able to communicate to the audiences in passions and conversations they are familiar with. And finally, it's an A, authenticity. I think uh, for the longest of time, Singapore has always been very clear that we cannot overpromise or oversell Singapore. We present uh, content as it is. And lately, we have started realizing audiences are very discerning. So they are comparing notes, they are talking to their own uh, friends, and, and, and that's important that we communicate very uh, in a clear and authentic manner. So some of the projects we have done uh, from ranges from Bollywood movies to TV series. Uh, recently, we had the privilege of working with the uh, Wood Kids to do Chota Beam, pre presenting seven episodes of Chota Beam uh, to, to the Indian audiences. And that was presented as a gift of smiles to the Indian audiences to engage in a, in a child-friendly uh, uh, manner. Uh, and, and these are some of the projects we have done. So our approach to content marketing is simply, how do we bring Singapore even closer uh, to the hearts and minds of the Indian audiences. Maybe I'll pause here and yeah. Sure, sure. Back to you. Uh, sure, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Isha, um, you, uh, I think, uh, do a very interesting um, uh, job out here, right? Uh, where brands are spending monies on the content marketing. You act um, as a resource center for them in guiding them uh, about trends by studying the data, by uh, studying consumer uh, metrics especially in these times of the millennial audience where everyone is trying to catch up with all the lingo. And also not just that, uh, from an ROI point of view, uh, how did their brand, the, the entire budgets perform uh, in terms of the sales or awareness or reach point of view? Yeah. Do you want to just um, take the audience through uh, what, what Nipa exactly does? Uh, thanks, Kulpreet, for the introduction. Also, uh, sorry, I think the panel got me on a very, very bad throat day, uh, but I'll try to uh, say as much. So a bit about NEPA and how content is so dear to us. What am I doing on Content Jam? Uh, NEPA is a consumer science firm, as you already mentioned, Gurpreet. It's been 10 years for us in India. And why content has been very dear to us is because uh, in the last three to four years, we have been consulting every, you know, brands in terms of their content strategies and also playing a part in terms of really deciphering the uh, omni-channel part to purchase as well and thus you know uh, content marketing uh, one important piece that I have seen in the work that we have been doing for a lot of brands uh, both for traditional legacy categories as you mentioned CPG and for emerging categories is that it, it is first becoming imperative it's becoming a rock solid part of the consumer journey we are seeing because of the advantages that it brings in the cost optimization that it brings in and I think on the panel we already talked about the creator economy economy booming it's becoming so easy to create content first of all that it's it's such a lever to the marketer you don't have to the, the dependency is gone i i would love to bring to the table also the fact that the amount of content creators which are becoming d2c marketers 
yeah. leave no room uh, to not have a role reversal right we've seen that with a personalized merge coming out from uh, con the content creators as well the second point that is very interesting in the work that nepa has seen and i have closed the uh, seen at nepa is with the emerging categories i mean cpg i think amin mentioned that you know cpg the, the, the categories are so nuanced that there is so much of literature uh, that you would know that this is the first bet that they're going to make when you know things are moving and shifting towards content coming in with all that knowledge but for categories like say a in home uh, services brand for a sleeping mattress which is just not related we're seeing that content is giving it's democratizing them because it's giving them a chance to uh, what i say is that it's giving them a chance to give them a larger objective a larger cause which is not related to the bottom line at all so it's telling stories it's also giving like a huge cause i mean take sustainability take take corporate responsibility etc i think that is going beautifully so uh the third thing that i also you know apart from the emerging categories pieces that i think video marketing is something that we have seen is just doing wonders the short form is becoming so short and and one trend that we are seeing is that it's just latching on trends i mean we see it in reels we see it in instagram for business uh that categories like sneakers and and because our work play in was their categories are just just not connected but video marketing uh, and the way it's uh, really bringing in uh, the heart of d2c uh to to the you know to the core is, is is seemingly very interesting at this point in time but i i you know maybe way in along but that's the starter remarks thank you thank you so much isha um isha you mentioned about trends right latching on to the trends uh, uh mr jain uh, amul has been uh, you know uh, one of the front drivers where uh, you have come up with fascinating campaigns whenever there are new trends or topical news worthy things out there uh, do i mean how do you see i mean i'm just saying the trends riding on the trends and doing campaigns while we discuss brand awareness campaigns and while we there is a debate on what's the conversion around that right how is it driving sales right unlike uh, you know when you're doing digital spends on google display networks where you can generate a lead and see an excel sheet you spend this much of money and these are the direct sales out there uh, but from your point of view riding uh, i mean it's actually a two part question riding on the trends uh, acting on that and uh, as well as uh, uh, building a, a balance between brand awareness campaigns when you're creating content and looking at it from a direct sales point of view okay i think very uh, good question but equally difficult also uh, i'll also answer in two parts uh, a as i mentioned uh, the uh, content helps you remain top of the mind and that's what the amul topical does it's one of the examples i'm sharing right now uh, the amul girl does not talk about any amul product per se okay so that is where we are delinking the mascot and the communication which creates the content which is a central uh, continuation character of the campaign for last 55 years with the products that we market so both are delinked so customer when he or she looks at an amul topical they know amul is not going to say aaj amul ka butter khao kal amul ka bread khao kal amul par so cookies khao i mean the product marketing and brand marketing is different now believe me unlike most of companies sitting here or in the audience uh, we spend less than 1% of our turnover on advertising so it's a very very difficult call when you have so little a budget and still you are saying that the most valued topical property of the organization is not talking about any of the products okay so this is necessary to remain uh, making consumers remain interested in your product and uh, your brand name and be remain top of the mind and that's how you become topical create content on topicality and uh, ride on the wave then the comes the change in technology and how the brand adapts to it. Uh, this is where the conversations come in very handy uh, i'll just take one minute to talk about amul's entry into the dark chocolate category in a very very competitive chocolate market at some point of time we were very good in chocolates then suddenly in the 19 90s and uh, up to 2010 15 uh, we were languishing in the bottom of the spit okay then we said how do we get back into the chocolate category so we didn't want to take on the leading brands head on in their space of milk we said get on to the dark space and we created the entire brand of amul dark chocolate the entire portfolio of dark it 40 55% 75% 90% 99% peru venezuela tanzania all that entire range over 35 40 products share on word of mouth you listening to conversations of the customers creating the products around that and these customers actually ensure that the distribution of the product also happens at the place where he or she is residing and all this with again zero rupees investment in advertising and brand building imagine cadbury's sales turnover advertising advertising to sales ratios are in double digits we were taking on the giant with zero rupees spending advertising simple because when you create a small content and the social media gives you conversation your product is very good 
your distribution is not very good and i was i'm talking about 2015 to 18 on that era and uh, still you can see amul now available in more than 3 lakh shops our single bar costs 100 rupees minimum and still your distribution is wide and customers keep asking for more and more variants so listening to customers and adapting uh, uh, and creating brands also is an experience uh, we've had and we've been replicating across various other products also but uh, a it's not very difficult to do so you have to have the basics right and uh, then the confidence in your customers that they are the guys or uh, ladies who want to buy your product wherever they are because their friends are recommending it and not a typical brand advertising communication of 20 40 60 second is notes so this is the power of the medium which we need to leverage no no thank thank you so much i think that's um, that's what we all discussed that the power of creating good content where the audience who is consuming it they become your marketing team and they start sharing it further and without you having to always spend uh, crazy media spends uh, mr sagar uh, how critical it is for tata uh, to ride on uh, the ever changing trends right and especially when you're talking about content being generated on the digital platforms right where you are reaching out to a large set of young audiences as well right riding um, just just adapting to that uh, how how critical is is from a tata point of view yeah i think uh, uh, for every single brand uh, content is an important part of the strategy and one of the things that we also realize is uh, uh, for the young audience uh, obviously the platform platform matters right what platforms you are and also the messaging uh, technology so one of the things that we had done and see one part of uh, uh, so we we had essentially one pillar of uh, our brand building is uh, generating brand love especially for a brand like tata salt which obviously is consumed by around 75 crore indians one of the highest loyalty uh, one of the most trusted brands Uh, so we had you and, and uh, so one example that i would like to give on gandhi jayanti we had created one uh, ar enabled uh, technological intervention wherein on the mg road in mumbai there was an installation if you walk past that in, uh, installation you will get a message uh, from gandhi actually there would be a picture of gandhi would almost pop out and say oh, you are walking on my road but are you walking on my path Uh, and it actually started many people and then they said out that you know gandhi obviously spoke about uh, cleanliness like cleanliness is next to godliness and showed the pictures of various public places in the city where uh, you know uh, where where the amount of filth and amount of dirt is so much what are you doing so you walk on my road every day but uh, will you uh, on on the 2nd october will you also take pains to walk on my path uh, while it engage a lot of people because obviously those that that road obviously the fort area is one of the most crowded in the Uh, uh in the country it, uh, it it created lot of imagination and it, it went viral so i presume using of tech use of technology in a you know in a very innovative way uh, engaging way and to choice of platform really makes makes an important uh, uh, criterion for brands to really engage uh, another part of a very interesting question which you asked uh, uh, i think to jain i would actually want to contribute if you yeah. if i may uh, which you spoke about this performance marketing and brand awareness marketing and lot of people ask this question uh, i would say that uh, uh, performance marketing is actually not marketing it is sales mm. and there is a fundamental difference between marketing and sales i think the job of marketing is to make selling redundant right uh, and uh, the basic message basic fundamental promise that a market marketer has to make is that how do you create a narrative which is lowest common denominator among multiple people creates their grabs their attention and makes them to act right while for niche categories while it may still make make lot of sense uh, i would say for mass categories and brand which really want to make they have to create narrative which are very compelling also financially it makes no sense let me give you an example i mean most of the cpg categories and i think lot of my experiences are basis uh, consumer product because that's where i have spent most of my 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 time the per t- you know the ticket size is very low so if i were to really acquire a customer the minimum cost of acquisition is 150 to 200 rupees right if i do the same good quality content if i do good content the cost of view is 20 paisa okay yeah. and if i do that at a frequency of three times four times that is 70 to 80 paisa if my brand is strong if my messaging is strong the consideration to awareness ratio is 70% from consideration to purchase ratio is around 60% you work out the maths right it will work to some you know 2 rupees 3 rupees of acquiring a customer allowing me to spread myself uh, uh, quite wide right uh, and i would presume that uh, and that i would advise to most of the marketers i think don't fall for trend uh, let's let's understand uh the fundamentals and what will really make the brand i think the idea of brand is everlasting and uh, and really investing behind 
creating brands that customer want to prefer and one classical example i have given to multiple people that for a same funnel different brands will have different uh, uh, different conversion ratio and the differentiating factor is not the medium choice but the 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 choice for the brand right so uh sure. sorry you didn't ask me that question no no no, no i mean this, this i mean this question for every for everyone uh, on, on on the panel uh mr amin i mean again same two questions for you as well oh. because also as a part and you and your teams i think go through this every day with every brand right uh, awareness campaigns uh, mm-hmm. what's the sales being driven and also predicting trends right i mean and a lot of times you must be getting calls from brands yeah. while when they would have seen yeah. certain campaigns that we should have wrote on that right and at times you guys would have yeah. predicted something but brands might not have agreed i mean i i think it's just because i work very closely with your team so i i just love to hear some example and stories from your side okay uh, so first and foremost uh, i completely agree with what father mentioned you know uh, and uh, you know you know market just to really really stay away uh, from from this entire you know trend philosophy and you know that's also that 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 that's something that i completely agree with the second thing very importantly he he alluded towards and he actually implied as well was that you know you you should have a view of what's the customer lifetime value you know uh, that you should look at and therefore that is where your business will will model will operate now uh, it's just that i'm just building on this just just yeah. building on this, this this line of thinking that many brands who are coming into the market recently and new or an emerging categories like deepa mentioned earlier you know they really don't have the the luxury that sagar and his brands have of 75% loyalty now when you don't have all of those things how in that kind of an environment do you really really build a brand you know uh, in a manner where you can balance your short term as well as your long term objectives i think more and more companies who are launching uh, you know in the emerging market categories are actually trying to trying to you know find that balance that how do i win on short term and how do i you know kind of also invest behind the long term uh, and in that balancing act you know uh, given if given the way the consumer is spread across multiple touch points and the proliferation of media and all of that i think it's very very difficult it's becoming a great challenge for them to to really find that thin balance uh one of the recent studies that i was going through actually said that the new and emerging the millennials or or the consumers uh you know the loyalty percentage uh, 60% plus people don't really have you know are not showcasing uh, any form of consistent loyalty you know uh in in this kind of an environment where consumers are increasingly going to be flirtatious you know how do you really really make compelling narratives you know to 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 attract yourself towards your brand so so that's that's one challenge and and we should all think come together and you know solve for it so that's one part right the second thing that i want to say is that in the same set of studies it shows that digital as a medium is really really helping influence these light uh, loyal consumers in a certain way so digital has a great influence so, so so my 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 second point is that yes this entire digital medium and especially for these young flirtatious consumers is is really really acting as a influential conduit so those two are important elements in our in our consideration right the third important consideration if you if you if you move from there is that again i'll go back to the the, the previous question you know uh, the, the the conversation that we had is that at which stage is the consumer in his journey and therefore once i realize that you know this is a person who's interested in you know coming in for home interiors or this is a person who's looking at buying a car or these are the people and then there are many data points which are available you know and then we can actually see intent and we can actually see you know uh, intent building up you know through various digital and, and and through the conversations like mr jain mentioned earlier as well so if if you look at those data and insight stories you will come to know that there is a bucket of consumer who is already either in the category or already in the marketplace mm-hmm. i think people who are in the category or in the marketplace showcasing intent they need a very different approach to activating that funnel versus mm-hmm. people who are going to be in you know you want to invite them into you know category consideration or you know uh, you know uh, and then there on so i think these are the ways in which you can actually look at and segregate you know different uh, you know sets of consumers within within the entire universe and then derive your strategy mm-hmm. so super okay all right thank you thank you thank you sir uh, mr uh, shrithar uh, 
I mean, it's often believed, right, that the tourism marketing is a very impulsive uh, marketing where people are taking a uh, call basis when they're seeing something, a content piece, when they're planning their vacation. Uh, from your point of view, uh, um, at like like Mr. Amin mentioned, uh, the, the influencer marketing, right? The, how, I mean, is it a big part of your marketing budgets or still long form content planning throughout the year is something with which you guys focus on? Um. So, so I think uh, we, a few things have changed, right? Point number one, uh, we are living in a very different environment where a lot of digital natives, people are consuming content, very personalized content has, has come up. So for us, uh, it has been very important that we look at active and passive marketing. So active, active marketing has been previously very sales oriented, right? When you are in the consideration of a travel up pops up, pops up uh, some STB advertisement together with maybe our travel agent partners, and, and you decide to book the package and come to Singapore. Uh, but increasingly, we have realized that uh, a lot more passive stage marketing is needed, where even before they are even considering a holiday, we need to be able to engage the consumers and let them know about what Singapore is and what the destination is all about. So you are right. We have, uh, we have started looking at all forms of uh, content creation. So whether it is content that we create uh, on our own with partners, like say whether it's Book My Show, National Geographic, or, or Tripoto, which are all platforms which has got different ways of storytelling, or, or Chota Beam or a, or, or a Bollywood movie. So that's content creation with, a, with another like-minded brand or platform. Two, of course, there's content that we create with our travel agent partners, because these are the guys who are actually selling and, and converting these uh, uh, purchase decisions, right, and, and bringing them to Singapore. But increasingly, we are looking at uh, influencer marketing. Influencer marketing has, has, has gone big time. I think uh, uh, Aisha was talking about it also just now that a lot of us uh, are starting to see uh, influencers have become marketers of their own. And we are looking at influencer marketing. So we are looking at them as passionistas because we, we sell Passion Made Possible as a, as, as a brand, Singapore's brand. And we look at their passion points and how do we use their voices in authentic voices Either they have A, consumed that, those experiences in Singapore, therefore they can then talk about them, or B, it is a passion point, and they are then connecting with a Singaporean uh, similar passion, uh, and then they tell their story. So influencers has become very important. The other, other uh, uh, look at that we are looking at is the vernacular lens. I think uh, the likes of Tata and Amul in the room will know about uh, connecting with an audience in their language has now become so important in India. Um, and we are looking at, so prior to, 29, uh, prior to the COVID-19, we had 15 cities uh, from which an Indian traveler can come to Singapore. And we have realized that whether we need to communicate in Tamil, of course, they can still get this com communications done in English and some of, most of the time our communications get through. But we have started realizing communicating in native language, whether it's Gujarati, whether it's Tamil, Malayalam, uh, Hindi, all of that is becoming very important. So we are, we are looking at micro-influencers now. We are looking at vernacular content. Uh, so the content creation and distribution has now have to be looked in totality and seeing how the various trends are coming out of India. Uh, we are now seeing how we can customize the content for audiences across India. Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And I think as a, as a tourism, as a category also, uh, fits very, very interestingly, organically into creating content, right? I mean, it's not that you, you just have to reinvent the wheel in terms of, I mean, to, I mean traveling is some, somebody which everyone loves and, and they relate to. And when you activate influence, I think that's why in my experience, when we have worked with tourism boards, a lot of them have seen very high ROI in terms of uptake uh, of, of the tickets being booked for those countries when we have activated influences for some of these campaigns. Uh, Isha, uh, you know, when uh, most of uh, the brands and uh, agencies, when they're activating marketing campaigns, right, there are different metrics to measure the ROI, right? The, 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 there are discussions about what's the overall reach, what's the, now there's a discussion about leave reach, what is the engagement, right? And then a discussion about, I don't care about the engagement also, uh, how many leads, how many clicks uh, uh, did I get, right? I mean, there's a, there are different metrics being, and nobody, I don't know if anybody knows what's the right metric uh, to measure the content marketing. From your uh, uh, research, from your point of view, when you deal with brands, what do you uh, uh, prioritize and how do you talk to brands and help them understand this entire ecosystem? 
Yeah, I, I, that's a very uh, interesting and relatable question. It hurts <laughs> borderline because I think we are just challenged in terms of we're so used to quantifying uh, the measures and impact that this just like, you know, springs up when it comes to content marketing. Uh, so you talked about reach, you talked about CTRs. One thing with content marketing that we advise when we work with both legacy and emerging brands, or be it short term, be it long term, is that when working with content marketing in D2C, don't be D2C, which is don't be desperate for conversion. You know, so I think that is so uh, makes for a hilarious debate because I think we're so used to the rapid, uh, very rapid feedback loop on yeah. CTRs, on the reach numbers, the impressions. We are building a narrative through content, right? Like I think Sagar mentioned very nicely that uh, it work towards making a compelling brand, and thus that and that's not that's not a liberty that a lot of emerging categories definitely have, but it cannot solve for instant gratification as well. Right. It might like give you reach, but it doesn't mean that your uh, conversion numbers in the funnel are going to move overnight. And when we run brand health trackers, we often are faced with that question. To your very pointed piece that what is the correct measure? I think we all are trying to find that answer. There is not like singular aspect to it, but it's very important while measuring that. What do you want to do? Is it the imagery? Is it the positioning that you want to really, you know, like. Uh, see a uh, gap bridging in is it really the uh, you know the numbers moving in the bottom funnel that you are trying to move in because it takes time uh, to give you an example we were working on a recent study on a core theme as sustainability and we thought you know cpg clients are going to be the ones who are running green and feature number one but we saw tech brands we saw consumer tech brands like google whatsapp featuring high on sustainability and like, okay, this is, this doesn't, you know, this doesn't really tie up, but maybe actually it does because it's the work of conscious years of legacy building in, uh, having different perspectives on content to sustainability, which goes beyond green, right? Having a larger purpose. So does, uh, and we also saw, you know, like twice the concentration increase for these brands just on the peg of sustainability being a hook. And that was very interesting to see. So there is no particular uh, matrix that I can really pinpoint at because it depends upon the objective that we have in the, uh, you know, one in the life stage of the brand, the, the amount of years that category has really matured as. But yes, like really the conversion might not be the only piece where you should look at content. I think it's uh, the, the quality of content. When, it, when you look at awareness, rather look at quality of awareness that you're bringing in. If you're yeah. looking at consideration, what is the quality? Because if tried to now started, you know, creating these proxies, in the mm -hmm. funnel when when you're working with content and and even for pop culture talk you know important critical uh, social themes like say lgbtq we've seen that for that maybe awareness is there but the quality of awareness is the criticality when it comes to content so that's yeah. i think a parallel proxy funnel of uh, the quality of the kpis becomes extremely critical while uh, working with uh, content as core in marketing no, no, absolutely. I, I, I personally believe that, I mean, content marketing is just one of the vehicles. It's, it's very, it gets very difficult if to start measuring ROI from a piecemeal point of view, right? And it's a holistic approach uh, of marketing. Right? Yeah. I might have seen something, some content piece today. I might not drive the sale itself today, but when I'm willing to do my research on that product category tomorrow on Google, it will yeah. be somewhere, somewhere in my conscious that I've seen something uh, like, like she said, men mentioned while I was watching Chota B, impossibly, I see, I saw some visuals of Singapore and now it's sticking into uh, my yeah. mind. It might just drive the sale out there. I had a long list of questions you guys have seen. I've sent on the group, um, but uh, we are uh, out of time already. So um, I think uh, um, we would uh, wrap it up uh, right now here. I don't want to eat into the pan time of the next panel. Uh, Bhavna, are you there? Yes, very much. Gurpreet, what an uh, insightful discussion, I must say. Absolutely glued to the screen and listening to everyone was of immense joy. Thank you once again to all our panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gurpreet, for being here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting all of you. Okay, bye.